Hello and welcome to another in this series in conversation where some of our leading iconographers reflect on some of the issues that they face in their work today. In this conversation we're going to be looking at some of the issues raised by Black Lives Matter. Icon painting is the art of the liturgy and St John Chrysostom, one of the great early church fathers, made it very clear that there was a close ethical connection between what we did in the liturgy and the way in which we behaved in our normal lives. Do you wish to honour the body of the Saviour? Do not despise it when it is naked. Do not honour it in church with silk vestments while outside it is naked and numb with cold. He who said, This is my body, and made it so by his word, is the same who said, You saw me hungry, and you gave me no food. As you did it not to the least of these, you did it not to me. Now we know that images are worth a thousand words, and nothing expresses the Christian faith more comprehensively than the icon. How should we make icons, therefore, which reflect those words of St Paul, who said, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. This is the topic of our conversation today. And Ivan, we're just friends on Facebook. I think Peter is friends with you on Facebook. Aidan, are you friends with Ivan on Facebook as well? I am, I am yes. Yeah. Hey, I'm, well, I'm look really at really lovely to see you, Ivan. I've been wanting <laughs> to meet you for such a long time. And in my words. Thank you. I'm I'm very happy to meet you because mm, it's very very interesting your works. I have seen a lot of icon all your icons, and I think that it's very very interesting in my work. I have uh, more affinity with uh, with my my sensibility and my work. It's very very interesting. Mm, very very interesting. Oh, likewise. <laughs> so I'm. Ivan, <laughs> I live in Rome, <laughs> in, a, in a very, very beautiful town. And Rome is very, in, very uh, infinity town. It's not, not, it's not eternal infinity because there are a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I invite you to visit Rome because now we have Santa Maria Antiqua, that it's very, um, it's, it's, uh, the, rest, uh, the restoration is finished. Then oh. there are founded a lot of things very, very interesting between 18th, uh, 7th century to 9th century. Um, very, uh, the 16th chapel of the medieval age, I think, that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a, a good, uh, a good comparison with that. Uh, with the 16th treble. Then I paint icons. I was very young because I was uh, four, 14 years old uh, mm -hmm. with uh, my teachers. Then I, I have uh, three teachers very important for my life. First of all, uh, Mother Irina, Mother Yunia, um, Irina, it, uh, she was a monk in the Russian monastery here in Rome, Uspensky Monastery. Uh, she was my first, my first um, uh, teacher. Second, Fabio Nones, very important uh, uh, master, maestro in, uh, in Italy. And then the last, and I think the one of the most important, Father Andrei Davidov from uh, now he lives in uh, Suzdal, but um, in the, in the, some years ago, he lived in uh, Pskov. And it's very, it, it was very interesting because he, he have a very uh, free paint in a, an icon. Uh, he paint uh, um, very, very free. Than, than the, the, the mode that we, we have, we can see uh, normally. Uh, so, uh, you, you understand everything because yes. I, I don't know. <laughs> yes, excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you. <laughs> then, um, and so now I have my work 
I, I live in Rome, then I have uh, my home and my studio. As, uh, in my, my studio is inside my home, see? And, uh, and then this is, this is my, I, I, now I am in my studio, it's so small, it's not, it's not a very, very big. I want a big atelier with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I have a small. And, uh, and I live here now. Uh, I'm so happy to make this work. Uh, uh, pandemia too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that's lovely that's that's a great little snapshot into a life of iconography and you're so young already so you know this is uh amazing <laughs> yeah yes it was very in interesting because my grandpa uh, the um, they he taught me about the prisoner when he was in, in the Second World War in Rodi, Rodi. Ah. And, uh, and uh, he was saved by an Orthodox priest. And um, I give my life to Orthodox <laughs> 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 because if uh, uh, I think that my grandpa was saved by an Orthodox priest. And uh, in, this is for me. It's very, very important. And um, uh, what to say? Uh, the 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 the, um, the tales of my 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 grandpa's tales was very important for my uh, for my comprehension of the icons. What is it? Mm. Um, this is very very interesting. Mm -hmm. Super, thank you, Ivan, for that that little introduction. Um, Peter and and Aidan, do you want to respond? Well, it's very interesting for me, um, Ivan, to hear who your teachers are and how early you started. You say at fourteen, were you fourteen? Yeah, when you started? fourteen yeah. years old. It's amazing, and that was with the nun in. in yeah, Rome. wonderful. Yeah, I'm interested how your work has progressed. I've only seen works you have painted in the last. I don't know, 10 years. So your very first icons, were they in the sort of Moscow Russian style and then you changed? How's your your style changed over that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I start with Russian style. I think mm -hmm. that um, mostly icon painter in Italy started with a uh, Russian and Russian style. Mm -hmm. Because the first uh, teacher that come here in Italy uh, come from Paris, from Saint Serge, uh, Institut Saint Serge de Paris. De Paris. Uh, this is very, 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 very interesting for us. Mm -hmm. Then in the, in, um, now I paint with uh, a Roman style because mm -hmm. I think that it's very interesting to make a Roman style. We have a lot of icons here. The seven icons more ancient of the world are here in Rome. It's not in another in another places. Then I think that if I want to comprehend, com I want to comprehend the icons, I must see my heart in Rome. Mm. Because if I want an art as absolutely, um, uh, let us say. Um, real art, real secret art for a Catholic Church now, I must see my ancient art in my territory, in my town, in my world. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it's very interesting because my Russian I have friends or Russian, Greek, Romanian or the other, or the other nation uh, come here and then they said to me, you have a beautiful model. What, what do you want from what <laughs> you have a best model in the world then it's not it's not important that you, you copy the bluff it's very important very beautiful but i think it's not real for our situation now mm. yeah i agree entirely yes that's why i was asking really i was interested I in your journey from what I presume was the straight Russian painting to one more rooted in Rome. There's certainly Roman iconography, mosaics, wall paintings, 
have had a big influence on me the last eight, nine years because it's a form of Western iconography. Um, obviously, Peter and I were influenced also by the Romanesque and Anglo-Saxon, but um, I, I'm, I'm drawn more at the moment to the Roman because it's, it's, uh, it models a bit, in a bit more detail than the, um, than the uh, Romanesque, perhaps. So it's interesting to hear your journey. Yes. It's an interesting, um, I think, and when you, you live the art rather than simply paint it, then you make a natural connection with where you are. You're, you're, that, that to me is where the power of an authentic iconography has to come from, because if you're living your faith, you live your faith where you are. So it's incarnated. So it's an automatic dynamic. You, you can't, um, you can't be transfigured by Christ in your own life without your art catching that. So that there's a, a sort of cyclical nature where one leads to the other and the other leads to, to back again. Um, so if you are in Rome, then, I mean, you're in the best place to be, be inspired and incarnated by, um, by, by your experience. Um, I think England's a little bit more difficult because we've had such a dreadful iconoclasm. Um, the, the landscape is, yeah. is full of, of ruins rather than temples. Um, and though the, the history of, of um, the revival of Christianity, especially in its more Catholic forms, is a very rich one. It's, I think when it's permeated into the, into the bones of the culture, it creates it's another stream, another vitality, um, which mm -hmm. when you haven't got that, it makes it really, 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 really hard work to yeah. to to flow um and i mean i think if you're an orthodox say like aiden then you know you've got a very strong iconographic church that you can plug into um though obviously i think in a mission country it, you you're affected by the the paucity of the local culture as well as its richness um, as Catholics, I think we've been affected by iconoclasm in lots of different ways. And so we not only live in a culture which is broken in terms of the, the presence of the sacred being acknowledged, we also live in a church which has in some ways abandoned some of the rich traditions of uh, sacred painting um and this this creates yet another barrier to to um a fluency with liturgical art the language of liturgical art um so i think it's it, what is interesting is when you even though we're all from the west um nevertheless that the experience is really quite varied and different um which is makes for a very interesting situation, um, and hopefully it will 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 make for an interesting conversation today. What I was thinking about to talk about today was um, now this might sound a bit political ab about the Black Lives Matter, and the reason that I I want to bring it up as a, as a topic. If you don't want to talk about it, then we'll talk about something else but if if liturgical art is expressing transfigured humanity this vision of the gospel where there's neither slave nor free greek or jew um etc that's the vision at the heart of 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 the liturgy um and given that strong tradition of social justice 
say, for example, that, that quote by St. John Chrysostom, um, saying, Honour Jesus then by sharing your property with the poor, for what God needs is not golden chalices, but golden souls. Um, so I think that's a very, very strong, central tradition in Christianity, where what happens in the liturgy ha has a direct relevance to social justice, the, the vision of humanity in the kingdom of God. And one of the things which, which I came across reading some of the, the stuff that some people had put up about the, 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 the difficulties um, being a person of color, for example, in America, yeah. was that you don't see people like me. So, um, Peter, we've got a... Okay, you still got your phone. Wait a minute, let me see if I... He just sat there twice, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, there we are. That's a bit better. Peter, you came in twice. Uh, ah, okay. <laughs> Yes, my internet just went down for some reason. Ah, the gremlins. Gremlins. Um, so... With the Black Lives Matter thing, the, this idea that, say, for, especially for, say, uh, a, a black child in a school where all the teachers are white, the images of belonging that are being conveyed in that circumstance can leave people feeling very excluded. Images certainly matter. They're very powerful. They, they, they communicate who belongs. And in the liturgy, when you stand um, in the church and there are these saints all around us, but if they all look like one particular community, one particular ethnicity, is there something missing there? Is this something that we as iconographers who are creating these images of the liturgy with the deep, profound theology that that, that, that implies, can we be indifferent to this? And if, and if we aren't, then what is an appropriate response? Because I think we've, we've probably all seen people taking iconography and doing, for example, the Madonna and Child as a, as a black African woman. How do people feel about that? Do we feel this is this is authentic, or is this something we 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 want to embrace? Or you see what I mean? I think there are some some really important questions here, which can in, impact on our practice and also on on how we teach about iconography and where 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 we we want to see it in the liturgy. So that I thought would be an interesting topic. And there's absolute oh. silence. <laughs> well, I, I personally don't see it. I mean, I'm, I confess that I am uh, quite radical on these, on these matters. I personally don't see it essentially as a matter of colour. It's not about the, the colour of somebody's skin. It's not about how somebody looks or what gender or what even what faith they follow. I think what we are living through at the moment is a, a recapitulation of the, the economy, the economy of slavery. Um, and, you know, the, the fact that these, the, the, the people of black colour were used as commodities in, in a slave economy and ended up in the Caribbean working for British sugar planters or in America working for American cotton planters. I think it's the, it's the fact that it's part of the economy of slavery that is the root of the problem. You know, money is the root of all evil. And I think actually people are still living in slavery. People are living in economic slavery. You know, most people in this country, in the developed world, Italy, are maybe too 
two salary checks from no house, no food. Okay, so we got it. But Peter, can we can you draw that into your work? Because we can't. I mean, we could have a big discussion about slavery and so forth. But I think for for our discussion, mm -hmm. I think how does this how how does it impact on on us and what can we do how should we respond given that that there is a sort of conscientization going on in our culture at the moment which is saying for too long people have been overlooked um at at the minimum as well as being the direct victims of of violence of discrimination of exclusion as iconographers what's our response i think to try to pin it down to our work because we're making images which are in the church and if they're in the church they're supposed to proclaim the fullness of the gospel mm. so how we show humanity seems to me a moral issue that we should be addressing in the same way that for example it, women being included in, in in iconography or married couples being included you know we often see a very monastic group of, of of mostly men and some women in in the church um on the walls in 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 the saints who are popular um but certainly i think when it comes to a variety of color um there seems to be a sort of like this is i'm really pity that uh, stefan isn't here because it's a shame it is yeah it really is um as a as, as a as a black person from um with that whole coptic north african culture um i think it has something important to say but we're, we're still on a position where we're making images that people see um but that's what I'd really like to get at. I'm assuming that we all think slavery is wrong and racism is wrong. So, so um, do, you, do you think they were kind of stuck in a cultural language that you like, that, if you like, that might be considered by some people to be no longer relevant? That we're still depicting people dressed in in uh, you know, Byzantine clothes or, or, or Russian vestments? Is, mm -hmm. are, you, are you thinking that that people might not think that that's particularly relevant today? If I could say something here. I, I mm -hmm. think I'm always interested in the deepest cause of some malaise, and I think to the specifics of iconography, to me, the, the root cause of any mistreatment of people, either because of their colour, their race, lack of education, poverty, whatever, is a loss of the sense that everyone is in God's image. Once you lose a sense of that, you've had it. You can do all sorts of political, social things, but unless there's belief that someone's value is not in what they do, not what function they have, that God made them, full stop. That's all that's required. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, just the fact that we're painting icons and showing people um, in God's image, it, we're halfway there already. Right. The next thing is, as you're indicating, Ian, if a black person only sees images of white people, you might think, well, perhaps theoretically I'm in God's image, but these people don't seem to think that it's possible for a black person to become a saint. So I think on a practical level, um, probably we need to, and not just us as painters, but commissioners need to make a special effort to include, uh, at the very least, coloured saints. So if you're going to have a lot of saints around the walls, make sure that Moses the Black or other black uh, saint, saints are there. Um, I just finished a mosaic of Christ with the children for a church in Houston. Right. This is all outside. And Houston is in Texas, so they have a lot of Mexicans and they have some colored people in their parish. So the parish priest asked me to have some of the children colored. Mm -hmm. The one was um, not, 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 well, yes, he, he was actually black. It's difficult to do a mosaic of a face in black, but dark skinned person. The other person, this is more difficult, was supposed to be Mexican. It's difficult to, with the lack of subtlety you can get in, in mosaic, was, 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 was Mexican, and, and, then, and then the baby was a white person. So um, either in what commissioned, or we can recommend to the commissioner, if it's a group icon, I think we can include as many saints of color as possible. Or if it's a crowd scene, 
not necessarily of saints to include coloured people. But I think from the very fact that we are always emphasising, A, that everyone, regardless of the faith, is in God's image. Secondly, because we're depicting saints who are in God's likeness. And of course, a lot of the church fathers made this distinction between image and likeness. So image is something everyone has. Likeness is what the saints have. Mm. So to show that um, we're all likewise equally called to sanctity um, and, and a person, whatever their colour, whatever their economic background, um, is equally able to be a saint. So I think those three things, really, we can do a lot. Just by way to the fact that we're depicting everyone in the image of God, the fact that we're depicting saints and going out of our way wherever possible to have coloured saints. Um, is what do you we can do as iconographers? I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, the if we're saying, and obviously we are saying that everybody is is made in in the image and with the potential likeness of God. Mm-hmm. If then, when you go into the church, and all those people that you show achieving that are all white, there's an even there's a something really offensive in that in terms of that ex- implied exclusion. Um, and that's something I think we've inherited. And I think to, to turn this around a little bit, if you look at European churches, you know, the, this very white skin Jesus. I think, can Yes, Ivan. Yeah, I think that there are two great mistake mistakes that we we can we can uh, we can't do <laughs> first of all the authentic uh, um, liturgical art is um, is is uh, we, without ideology i think that sometimes we we make uh, the icons with uh, uh, ideology mm-hmm. the poor for uh, the poor the um, in, in this case the, the black man or the other or the other people other and uh, in, in the gospel uh, are not uh, sociological categories but theological categories the poor a uh, blessed the poor in spirit is not the poor with money but the poor because I, I expect everything from God, not from other people, not from other people. Uh, this, this, this is our first, first uh, I hope that I have understand everything what, what you, okay. And uh, then um, I talk about, uh, I speak because I, I am a, a painter that I, I make icons, much, much, uh, with, with with the colors, with then uh, I think that the, um, the 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 icons must be um, uh, not um, only a decoration for the, for a church. Then I think when uh, when I paint for uh, for a church um, for a different church. That Apostle Paul, that they said, uh, there are not Greek, not Jews, but everything are one in God, in Christ. The the authentic uh, Christian art is the, the, the this is imagine, the, this is the, the real message. We are one in Christ. Then when I paint an icons, I I th- I I think that. The function, the functionality of this icon are, uh, inside uh, a community or inside the church. I think that that for me it's very interesting. It's very important because if it's um, a cosmopolitan community with uh, with a lot of people from uh, all over the world, that I must think how is the major more um exactly more uh, the, the function of this imaging for this for this uh, uh, for this community 
I think that th th this is my this is my opinion. Mm. Then another mistake that uh, I see in the I'm a painter that I took in <laughs> from uh, the point of view of painter that we can uh, it's not possible to take uh, the human figure and uh, destroy. We can. Uh, we has a lot of. Uh, um, we has a lot of um, um, uh, uh, mistakes. Um, so uh, that uh, we have confused the mimesis and the metamorphosis. Uh, this is two Greek words very very important. The, uh, the metamorphosis supposes the mimesis. Because if I make only mimesis, I make the uh, destruction of, of the human figure. For Can you me, explain what you mean by that, Ivan? Please? Can you explain what you mean? Yes, yes. Then I think that it's not possible to take the, uh, a human figure a uh, human person uh, and paint uh, without know how is the body mm -hmm. function the, the the hand is uh, the face the eyes because it's not a transfiguration of the figure because uh, we can learn that the icon is of a human figure and transfiguration transfiguration but it's not correct i think the transfiguration suppose the, um, the, 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 oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> um, the reality of the body, the reality, the reality of the body, because the incarnation is a real, is not a, a um, phantomatic. Exactly, event. exactly, yes. That the seventh council said this word, no? We paint because there is a real incarnation and not phantomatic. Yeah. In this, uh, um, in this uh, regula, Latins, regula, yeah. canon, we can say. Yeah. It's for all the people, all the colors of the people all, all over the world. It's not possible to take the human figure and Transfiguration. Tra mm. uh, this is not transfiguration, it's deformation. Exactly. That's exactly the word I think that was coming to my mind. It's, um, you want to transfigure reality, not deform it so it's not recognizable. Yeah. Yes. It's perfected, mm. Uh, mm. It, but not, tra not, not disfigured. No. Some people mistake iconography as idealist, but it's not idealist, it's, it's realist. It, it mm. starts yeah. with the physical reality, male, female, the colour, the culture, the time, and then transfigures that. Mm. I mean, it's a bit of an aside, but I think it's the weakness of most icon painting that people don't do their study of, of, of human form, of drapery first. Mm. So the transfiguration ends up being deformation. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, if I do an icon of a, a saint from Africa from the 8th century, I would research what sort of garments that person would have worn in the 8th century. Not because it's historically important in itself, but I think you're affirming the reality of that person in that time. Otherwise, as you're saying here, and you go into a church and they all look Byzantine or all look white or look, you know, to some political ideal rather than yeah. reality. Yeah. I, I think that the, this is very, very important because now we make a lot of uh, uh, deforma icon with deformation. Yes. If I make a, a good, a real, because the, the realism that we use for the icons is not the realism of the reality, mm. but the symbolic real reality. That it's it's very it, it, it's very real that the reality the symbolic reality that the symbolic real, reality is out from the time from the space from the, the from the human categories then the human people 
uh, can try to um, meet real the Christ and the uh, and the saint and the mother of God and angel, because the language the language is a, a, a eternal language is mm. not a uh, ideological or a uh, uh, little bit um it, the, the, the it's not closed in the time I think. But it has to be born in time. I think it's the the temp. It has to happen in time. Yeah. To, the whole point of the incarnation is it's a now. Meeting. It's now for me. Yeah. It's now for me. The eternal now. Yeah. Yes. And that's I think the the danger is either it becomes so earthly it becomes ideological. Yeah. Or it becomes so heavenly or spiritualized yeah. as to to become actually something that is um totally really detached from reality yeah it yeah. becomes if, if, if you can't relate to it you can't relate to it as a being when when religious art like celtic art it just pushes it beyond that point where it becomes zoomorphic rather than you can't have a a relation with it it's it's a relationship with it it's not a human a recognizable, recognizable human being anymore. It's too idealized. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite interesting that, that some some types of icon painting, like like uh, like the Coptic, like the Armenian, uh, like the early Romanesque, the damp fold, push it right to to the limit, where where there can still be icons that you can have that. That dynamic relationship with that person-to-person -person relationship with, but they're by no means classical. They're they're by no means you know classical and related so close to late Roman, late Greek art that they they look like um, you know the, the the icons that you find in the, the churches in Rome. There's a huge breadth of possibility, and it, I think it, it's quite interesting where you get to that edge. Where it becomes, uh, you know, something that you can't make into an icon. You know, there are some Romanesque is just far too abstract. Mm. You can't, you can't relate to it. It's not a being anymore. It's not a place anymore. It's just a nice pattern. Mm. I think, I think that's quite an important point. And then that goes to the other extreme as well, you, where you get naturalism being introduced yeah, you can't have a, to the a point that it's not it's not really transfiguration yeah it's 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 a sort of glorification of the natural form however beautiful it might be it's yeah. the eternal reality not not the temporal temporary reality yes but in the transfiguration the the physical form are the physical form a face mm. is a face yes the the physical uh, aspect of the Christ of the saint remain the physical aspect. Uh, for example, um, the the icons of uh, uh, Saint Moses of Ethio uh, from Ethiopia, yeah, as a black. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, we have in, in the Catholic Church we have uh, Saint uh, Bakita, mm -hmm. for example, as a black. And I think this is the characteristic of this saint. It's not change. It's not possible to change. Yes. It's, it's possible transfigurate, transfigurate it, but not change because uh, the, the risk is that we can develop a uh, docetism. The, uh, the the risk is the dochetism because the human nature is a um, uh, is a, um, uh, not is not real is a is a, um, illusion yes a fantasy uh, illusion. It's a fantasy yeah. of yeah. course okay but Ivan let's let's just take that for a moment because I think I think you're dead right but let's let's be critical of our tradition for a minute if you look at the icons of jesus hmm. and how in over the centuries he's moved from being an olive skinned jewish face yeah. to being a white caucasian slavic image red hair 
in Russia sometime. Yep. Yes, but not such a bad thing, I may say. <laughs> but <laughs> but you see what I mean? The 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 there is a tendency within the church to or among Christian people to become less than than rooted in the fullness of what the tradition is demanding of us and that may be part of i mean i've been wrestling you know how do you depict jesus do you show jesus as the universal man so therefore he can be black he can be chinese he can be white caucasian he can be jewish middle east or whatever this this is something that people have played with even in iconography without even maybe even consciously realizing they're doing it but what we've therefore resulted in is this image of Jesus who has become, ide ideology, uh, it's become an ideology. So Jesus has become an expression of white dominant culture. And maybe one of the things, I mean, what I'm, I suppose, now more inclined to do, my face is of Jesus and the apostles and so off. People sort of say, oh, they're very dark. And I've actually done that quite deliberately. Having lived in the Middle East, I suppose your reference uh, is, is slightly subconsciously being influenced. But actually, I think it's actually quite important that we should be doing that. Because if we don't do that, then we go to the other extreme, which is to say, well, we should be doing Jesus according to the culture that he's... Um, the, the, the icon is going to be in so if it's going to be for a church in ethiopia or it's going to be a church in india or a church in japan then we should have the christ figure taking on the the typical features of that particular community so i, I and, and i feel uncomfortable about that because actually what we end up doing is moving away from the reality of the incarnation which is a particular time and a particular place to something that's so cosmic and universal that then we end up, uh, if we're not careful, iconography becomes just simply an expression of, of me and mine rather yeah. than the... Can't just universe. make it what you want. Yes. I, I think that, that in this, in, in this uh, question there are a problem, I think. I think that if I don't paint the Jesus Christ, the icon of Jesus Christ that I know, is not recognizable. Recognizable. Yeah. It's not recognizable. The face of Christ is not um idea of a painter, but is a, a model that is, is the tradition of the church. The church in Ethiopia, the church of India, the church of China and Japan. And I think that the realism of the incarnation is is that Jesus Christ was born 2,000 years old mm -hmm. with okay. the face, with, with the, the face that we know, with the, the beard, hair, the beard. Yeah. Yeah. and, uh, and the, the, um, the, um, the, the process of the, the, the face of Christ is not a, a simple process in the church. It's, a, it's not only an artistic process, it process, it's a theological process. Sure. This is very interesting. I think that is not uh, the, the, the problem are not the, the, the face of Christ that we paint, but the theology that we have. We have a theology with a um, uh, philosophical category of a uh, Roman Greek uh, Greek category, for example, that is not good for China, for example, is another uh, other other things. We ha we have this uh, we have this problem. I think is not problem that how we paint the icon of Christ. The, uh, Christ is uh, have this face because. The realism of incarnation is this, but the um, evangelization is different for the for the other 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 places, other nation, for example. I hope that I part of the. Let's not confuse my 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 world as much. <laughs> I, I, well, I understand you. I think so. It's and um, it's 
if we think of evangelization, I mean, one of the tensions for the church in, in Africa has been how do you appropriate this very white image that is so often found? Whereas if, if, if the images of, of, say, the Sacred Heart, for example, the Statue of the Sacred Heart, mm. um, where you have these, this very white, very, very white Okay. Um, that's that's become culturally appropriated by 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 Western Europe. Um, we've there's a detachment has taken place between the the actual person that Jesus was in his humanity. I, I think the, oh, the to reflect what the 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 people themselves in their local communities and then they've universalized it this and i'm just I, I suppose what i'm trying to get at is for the first time i suppose in human history the world has become very very small mm. and the impact of one culture on another we're able to see maybe more clearly than at any other time in history you talk about a global village and whereas, say, a hundred years ago, you could live in a village in, I don't know, south, south, the south of France or in, 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 in the Alps in, in Austria or wherever, and you might never really be exposed to cultures of people from very far away. Mm -hmm. Now, we live in the age of instant media, and we are all able to pl be plunged into the, the vast variety of cultures that there are. And we can begin to reassess the imagery that we use and how we use it. And we must do because images work in, in a visual context. And we, we can't pretend we aren't aware of, of all these things going on around us. But I think um, we're yeah, limiting it, the um, accessibility of different cultures to Christ just to the colour of the skin. So I think there are a number of things here. First of all, A, Christ is probably olive coloured anyway. So if, if you want to be historically accurate, depicting Christ as a, a white, white face is not accurate anyway. So it's quite fortunate that Christ probably would have been olive. So he's actually yes. looking toward the black, and but not, not black. So he, whites can identify with him. But I think... Garments, I think they can change. So if I were to be painting um, icons in Japan, you know, I, I would draw on the garments of, of Jap Japan. If I was designing a church for Japan, I'd draw on the Japanese architecture. Stylistically, um, you could still depict Christ olive-skinned, but you could draw on the Japanese uh, painting tradition. So... Mm. Pastry, Japanese would think, yes, this is a Japanese Christ, not because he's got slitty eyes, or, mm. but, you know, because, you know, the background to him, the way the psychologist was painted, draws on my tradition. I think the whole thing, talking about the pastoral um, approach to iconography, they were trying to show that this is not some colonization by yes. a Western European. I love your culture. I can see God speaking to your culture. Um, and, and you affirm that. So I, I think we can't limit um, people identifying with Christ or with the saint because of the colour of the skin. It's the garments, it's, the, it's, it's drawn on the local painting tradition, the architecture. We've got to think a bit more broadly than just what colour the, 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 the saint's skin has. Yeah, and is that just... Peter, sorry, yeah. Well, it, you, it's a... It's why it's why you do things. It's the the motive for doing things. Mm. Um, why you should want to appropriate something, or why you should want to change something, uh, or why you should want to show appreciation of something. I think it, it, it's the motive that that's important, really. Mm. Um, and I, you know, in philosophical terms, um, you know, there there are also people who are just um, symbolic archetypes that we in the west all know the figure and the face of the buddha and it's not a problem that he's oriental so i don't actually that's a think, good point yeah i don't actually think it's really a problem i don't think a chinese or an african person would be offensive 
up, up because of the fact that this person came from first century Palestine. Mm. You, know, you can't possibly be offended by that. But right. Peter, I think that, the, that that gets back to this point that if if in the Christian church we have actually taken Jesus and we don't present him as a Middle Eastern person, but mm. as a Caucasian or a, a basically Slavic, a white person, which is sort of what's happened. You know, we, we so it then it becomes an issue because if 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 you take the figure of the Buddha where we is presented an oriental person end of story as you say that's who he was that you can't argue with that but if you had a tradition where the Buddha was being presented in that very distinctive style but as people from different ethnicities then it would suddenly if you're not including one if you're including one but you're not doing it for another that then becomes problematical because it raises issues about well what are you intending what is the theology behind the image that you produce and this is i i suppose apply that to our situation where maybe the christian community has been very lax in not ensuring that the imagery that we produce has remained rooted in its actual historicity. Yeah. And Look at poor been... old St. George. Pardon? Look at poor old St. George. Yeah, exactly. Our, our own patron saint. Yeah. Yeah. A Palestinian leader from Lida brought back to Britain by Richard I. You know, a, 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 a Byzantine cavalry officer, essentially. Yeah. You know, what has he become? And the and the the visual visualization of him as a as a as a as a warrior and as and yeah, so he's forth. Become an archetype again. He's become an yeah. archetype. So Aidan, when you're 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 saying about well, let's just you've got all those wonderful things in terms of a culture that you can appropriate and bring into in into iconography. Um, what what do you see as the limits to that? Um, talking about Japan, for example, um, the things in Japanese culture, which, which uh, non-Christian Japanese culture, um, yeah, which aren't don't reflect Christ. So it requires a lot of discernment um, to find out in the philosophy, the architecture, the art, whatever accords with Christ and what doesn't. And that's where living the life of the church, I think, is really vital. So you, you, you have this conscious theological sense, but also this heart sense of, of, of something that, that corresponds with truth or doesn't. So you, you there are not hard and fast rules to this, I think. Um, I think, as I, we mentioned, I think, in one or two of our other discussions, that I think in many ways we live in a similar time to the apologists. Um, mm the first sort of three centuries of the church where you had people like Justin Martyr who looked at Christian, sorry, at Greek philosophy, Roman philosophy, and you know, discerned, well, some of these um, Greek or Roman myths actually do indicate Keep some talking, truth. Gentlemen. Yeah, do indicate some truth. So a lot of the early images showed Christ as Saul, the sun god, or Christ as Orpheus. Mm -hmm. um, so here the early church saw an Orpheus the patience of Christ. He could tame the wild animals by the beauty of his music. Orpheus descended into Hades to save his wife. So I think um, yeah, just it's really not something in the culture accords with, with, with truth. Um, and to do that, one needs to live the life of the church. Also discuss it with people, like in our group here. One of us might have an idea about something. We, we might think it's true, but we test it by discussing it with other people. And they could say, actually, I think you're off the rail here. It's not something we should attempt to do by ourselves. We need the counsel of the church, fellow iconographers, fellow theologians, people of prayer, whoever it is. I don't think there's any sort of uh, written formula. Mm -hmm. So how would you react to, for example, I don't know if, if some of you have seen um, these icons, I'll put them in cursive commas, where 
which have been done by a, a priest in America of Native Amer based on Native American culture. Oh, so, Robert Lentz. Not Robert Lentz. It's a, it's oh, no, it's a, he, tra he trained, isn't it? Um, and it shows, for example, the, the all the figures, all the dresses, traditional Native American uh, dress and features. So it, it's it's Christianity completely immersed in Native American culture. Um, and I've been shown these a few times, and I, I must admit, I'm. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to make of them. So, gentlemen, what 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 would you say? I'd have to see them first, but um, I think what Peter said is true. That the reason someone is doing something normally reveals itself on the fruit or lack of fruit in the work. Um, if someone really is concerned um, to bring Christ to people and they feel I've got to do it in such a way pastorally to help people, then probably, assuming they've got skill and they've got humility, probably what comes out will be fruitful. Um, I, I wouldn't say that motive is, 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 is a, completely, uh, a complete guarantee that what comes out will be good, but, um, uh, but, but sometimes I think people can be motivated more by a theological radicalism that is not actually very orthodox, small o. Yeah, um, but it's trying to be radical, and they'll do all sorts of things to shock, and it doesn't actually help pastorally. Yeah, mm. um, so just, just yeah. upsetting people for the sake of it. Is yeah, but they don't show off yeah. that I'm really a radical Christian, but yeah. Yeah. it hasn't really got a humble pastoral motivation, and that comes out in the, in the lack of success with the icon. Or it might be that because um, I think. There's, there is something, isn't there, in, 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 in hum, about the way human society develops. But, you know, I make my little contribution and it, it's not quite right. And somebody else takes something else and, and that's not quite right. But then we share it. And it, it, there's an authenticity of desire and an incompleteness of context. And there is the grace of the spirit which sort of pushes things. And we often don't know whether something's authentically in that or not you know it might be somebody is really upsetting somebody um like for example you know sort of time of iconoclasm somebody painting icons was a pretty radical step you know and seems very provocative um and yet through that fidelity and that willingness to 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 hang in to the tradition um the the the, the wisdom of that comes through um and it's even for example Space to experiment a bit. Yeah. Uh, but, but within parameters, it's not too radical. But yeah, have a bit of freedom to try something out, get a reaction from people. And mm. in principle, you know, I can't see anything wrong with this painter doing what they're doing. I haven't seen the work, but, you know, why not use garments and patterns that are indigenous? Mm. Theoretically, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's the, the, the challenge then is, well, and I, I suppose this is something I find myself is you know you're trying to to engage with with a particular context which might not be my context and you're trying to bring the tradition as much as you know it to that that context um and there's um a, a creative inspired sort of movement going on but it's it's somewhat inconclusive Mm. Um, and I think that, um, oh, oh, Peter, Peter's lost us again. One oh. second. Let me, let me bring it back in. <laughs> While they're doing that, I then, I just wanted to say how much I really love your work. I've been very inspired by it. So keep up the good work. <laughs> what I like about your work is that you show a deep understanding of, of garments and anatomy, but on the other hand, you're being free. And I think it's your masculineness and your understanding of these things that enable you to, to be creative. But it's not a creator, creativity that comes out of sloppiness. That's sort of disciplined creativity. So I just wanted to say how much I appreciate your work. 
Oh, sorry about that, Ian. I just while you're doing that. I'm yeah, gonna... no, I'm, 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 I'm very good. Um, I just. Pete, I've, I just said to Peter, come and join. I think his internet's playing up. So, so when he comes in, we'll we'll we'll, we'll pick that up again. Um, but I, I, it is interesting, I think, because in a way, what we're actually talking about is the the hard edge of creativity within the context of a tradition and within the context of the demands of liturgy. I think that's something we've not really sort of um, put on into the discussion that the liturgy is a delimit delineator isn't it it, it, mm. it we're not just painting for the sake of telling people about christ or proclaiming the faith it's it's for the actual liturgy itself mm. Mm. which i think also is is an essential contextualization yeah. um that's why i think probably smaller incremental changes are pastorally liturgically better because on the one hand and you get this in orthodoxy they associate tradition with just copying which is wrong yeah. um on the other hand um you don't want to get so radical in your changes that an icon doesn't work liturgically because people are just so shocked by it yeah but i think little uh, incremental changes experiments in community with humility uh, is the way forward but it must be in community mm -hmm. so that we do something that's about three percent different from other things so it's still sort of recognizable it's nothing shocking but with that three percent experimentation i hear what ivan what peter what Ian have to say and listen humbly and 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 see yeah you know, if i think it works well that's great if they think it doesn't why it doesn't work then i i drop the idea Mm. So there's a sense of experimentation with humility, but in community. Yeah. Ivan, what do you make of this? What What do you think of yeah. in response to what Aidan has said and what I've said? Uh, I think that the creati creativity for the, the icons, I understand just right. Okay. Yep. Um, I am so free <laughs> <laughs> because I think the the um, only the 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 only the the, the um, oh, sorry the oh, my words mm, the hermeneutica of the icon is the liturgy. Then yeah. inside the liturgy, you are free. Mm -hmm. You are the the the. The, um, the 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 life of the church. The life of the church is the liturgy. Then I am free. I am. Tell you again, Peter. <laughs> Why that keeps happening? <laughs> <laughs> that I think that the creativity. Um, I think that there are um, some things that is not is not good. First of all, that um, some people thinks that think that the icons is a repetition of the models. Yeah. Uh, but if I take a uh, uh, Sinai Christ and the uh, Rublov Christ, is the uh, very and uh, very variety is is not one. I think that there are um, few rouge inside down from the 6th century to the 13th century but the 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 the, 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 the so uh, common, but the, the the style the the mold the paint is is completely different because uh, I, sorry <laughs> oh, sorry um because i have um i think that the there are a lot of freedom in, inside the church. It's not. It's not real that the the model are ever ever the, the the repetition of the same the same type. I think that is not prob the problem that we can say sometimes of canon canon, but it's not good word for the uh, Christian art. I think that it's a very good word is uh, modulo. Modul, uh, modulo is a is a typical uh, Greek 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 word. Uh, we repeat a modulo. 
It's mm-hmm. not a canon. The canon is so uh, um, hard, very, yes. very hard word, I think. And uh, I think that, and, 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 and uh, with, with this, uh, with this uh, freedom uh, of the, the, the liturgical life of the church, I'm, I'm so free. I, I paint my icons so uh, so free. No, no, not not uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> not close. Not close in the box. <laughs> you can tell you're you're fluent. You're so fluent. You can tell. Yeah. And that's the that's I mean it, it that's the gift. It's the freedom of yeah. Son of God. <laughs> but it's also it's I mean it's also the gift that comes from hard work. Yeah. Because if you've if you've done if you've really, really <laughs> slaved away to know your craft oh, and yeah. to live that thing, then you have the freedom. It's it's hard earned, not the freedom, uh, the freedom is so scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 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 limit is so good. <laughs> The box is very good. Yes, yeah. <laughs> seductive. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, the the law of Christ is a law of freedom. It's not a law of uh, of uh, box. <laughs> mm. Absolutely, uh, that, I think that, the that, ultimate, it's the uh, ultimate freedom. I think you've been very blessed, um, Ivan, to start um, painting so young because uh, I think in our time being in, in postmodernism, we're exposed to so many different types of art that you can get the idea that it's an icon painter where sort of like a, a maker patchwork, we cut and paste. Yeah. Whereas if, you've, if the only language you've lived with then has been the, the, the worldview of a Christian iconographer, you can be free. It's as though it's your first language. Yeah. And, um, when you... as say if English is your first language and you write, you know all the rules of grammar naturally and you know how to break them. You know how to use those rules of grammar. But if I learn English as a second language, I'm very aware, no, you can't do that. That's not right. You've got to do it this way. Because that's what the textbook said. And I think most of us iconographers have learned icon painting as a second language. And we think, no, you can do this. You can't do that. But it's not inside us. Yeah. And what I like about your way of painting, I feel that, it's your first language. You're yeah. free because yeah. Yeah, it's what I do. It's what I am. Well, yes. uh, yeah. I mean, I've been painting for 30 years, but I still feel with my painting that I'm, I'm proficient at a second language. My life, I feel it's my first language. As an Orthodox Christian, that's my natural first language. But I feel I haven't yet come to the point uh, in my own iconography where I'm completely free because I'm, I'm, it's still... A good second language is not my first. And I think it's a problem that a lot of at least convert um, iconographers have is, is that we're still learning the language. I, I don't know what you feel about that, Peter. But, um, yeah, I, th- I think it, it, it's every day is a, a technical struggle and I'm, I'm never happy. Mm. And uh, I, I looked uh, to people like uh, Archimandrat Zenon and Ivan and, and uh, others, uh, and I, I, I don't. It, it gives me. It, it fills me with hope. It, it, it doesn't make me feel uh, envious. It, it makes me have a. It gives me goals. I, I keep finding goals for myself, both in in te- technical things I set myself. Like if I have an idea, um, I. Um, I, I like I like to explore the, the, the possibilities of, of. I mean, I, I the, my first loves as icons were Cretan icons. Mm-hmm. I saw a, an exhibition at the Royal Academy in I think 1986 called From Byzantium to El Greco, yes, and there were two icons by Michael Damaskinos, mm-hmm. an icon of um, Saint John the Baptist. Mm-hmm. Um, um, who was the other one? It was um, Zachariah. Was it Zachariah? Zachariah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With the Christ Child. Mm. Yeah. Um, and they were just so. Eff- it was effortless. It was like looking at uh, Ivan's work. 
it was fluent and it was effortless and he didn't even bother to finish the Zacharias he left it unfinished because it, he didn't need to finish it and that, that those are the sorts of things that I I kind of put myself as, as targets and but it's because I know what how they affect me I know how they make me feel um, and that I want I want to, to be able to to for my work to to draw others in in the same way as they draw me that you know my ambition is to is to make the icons work for other people mm. uh, but i'm never happy i'm never happy and i always struggle so I, I i i speak italian very badly it's not my you know it's but it it's uh, i love it i enjoy it i fight with it every day <laughs> yeah. well gentlemen i'm aware that we've 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 hit our hour um and um uh, perhaps this is quite a good place really to draw this conversation to 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 a temporary halt until we meet again next time so gentlemen until next time thank you for yeah. thank you thank you gentle Ivan. grazie grazie thank you so much bye everyone bye, bye.